Poker is still alive and well in 2024, and I wanted to give you some of my top small stakes tips and strategies to get you winning more at the tables. Today we're playing 2-5, but the advice I give today also works at 1-2 and 1-3, or whatever your local casino stakes are. I walk into TCH Social here in Dallas, Texas, and head over to my table with a $1,500 buy-in, which is the max. I picked today's session for this video because it's very representative of the average poker session. Didn't make a lot of strong hands, I found myself in some tough spots, and I really had to grind it out for a profit. But that's enough talking, let's jump right into the action with my favorite hand, pocket sevens from under the gun. There's a $10 straddle on, so I make it $30 to go. The player to my left puts in the flat call for $30, and now the button pops it up to $100, a nice sizable 3-bet. He is in position, so he doesn't decide to go 120 or 150. The action's back over to me. The odds of flopping a set are seven and a half to one, and I'm not exactly getting the direct odds to call. But let's factor in the player to my left. If I call, he'll probably put in the call as well. That's still not enough direct odds to call. But if we look at our stack and the opponent on the button stack, we're playing around $1,500 effective, which will give us an implied odds of 15 to one if we do hit our set and he has an overpair. Having the extra caller to my left also helps boost the pot odds. I decide to put in the call and the player to my left calls as well, so that is a desired outcome, but you need to beware of the double flatter. Never wanna be the double flatter because it severely caps your range to pocket pairs, suited connectors, and hands that generally won't be able to withstand a lot of pressure post-flop. With that being said, we kind of know the ranges of both opponents, so when we see a flop which comes 10, 10, 6, I start with a check, and the action checks over to the button. I don't really think he's going to be betting too often here with his overcards like ace, king, king, queen. Because myself and the opponent to my left both can have a lot of tens in our range and are going to get sticky with a lot of pocket pairs. I think calling once on this flop is fine. I'll be out of position the rest of the way, so I decide to take the tighter route and fold my cards. I'm hoping the player on my left puts in the call because that will give us the confidence that we had the worst hand. And sure enough, he does call, the turn comes a four, and uh, that's gonna do it for hand number one. Hand number two, another pocket pair, we upgrade two pocket tens from the big blind. Our buddy RV Phil, who we've played on the TCH live stream with before, makes it $35 to go, and the action's over to me. I decide to come in for a sizable raise. I wanna go large here because I'm out of position and in the blinds, I make it 135. Action's back over to Phil, and I don't know if you guys picked up his live body language, but he seems pretty uninterested with the hand, doesn't even really consider a re-raise after checking his hand once again, which kind of caps him. I don't think he has a better hand than myself at the moment. And we're gonna go off, heads up, out of position to a flop. It's a three bet pot, it's a little bit bloated here with 280 in the middle, and the flop comes ace, queen, deuce. A lot of players at low stakes will get a little bit scared in these post-flop 3-bet pots, but it's okay when you whiff the flop, you have the range advantage on this board, and if you did get out-flopped, that is okay. I decided to go for a C-bet here into the $280 pot for $135. I think Phil at this point could fold a lot of pocket pairs, could call me with a weak queen, and then we could take it away on the turn. And of course, if he has an ace, so be it. That's poker. He puts in the call, and the turn comes the king of clubs. This king of clubs is kind of a good card for me to continue on. I'm going to have king, queen, ace, king, ace, queen. Phil really shouldn't have many of those hands because like I said pre-flop, didn't seem too interested in going for a four bet. But once again on this turn, Phil did something pretty interesting. He checked his cards, picked it up, and showed it to TCU guy on his left. I'm not exactly sure if he's trying to get me to check or if he actually has a pretty strong hand and he's balanced here with his neighbor showing his cards range. I decided to start with a check here with my pocket tens. There's three over cards. And it's gonna be really hard to get anyone at these two five games off of one pair at this point, unless I decide to commit for a barrel here and then a barrel on the river. The river comes a seven of diamonds. I have some showdown value and I'm just trying to get to a showdown. I check it over to Phil who checks behind with ace eight offsuit. And yeah, I think it was pretty unlikely I was going to be getting him to fold. Uh, I don't really think you should be calling three bets pre-flop with ace eight offsuit, just a word to the wise. But uh, Phil is in charge of his own money. He plays his own game at his speed. 
and that speed is taking down a $550 pot. This video is brought to you by DraftKings. Don't worry, you don't have to travel all the way to Antarctica to play casino games. Now you can do it from the comfort of your home. Yes, I really am in Antarctica, and yes, those are icebergs behind me, and you better believe that I'll be playing poker with some of the penguins here in a later episode on the vlog. DraftKings Casino is the number one online casino in America with over 300 real money games. This month, they have an exciting deal going on if you use promo code WOLFGANG. They'll allow you to choose your own deposit match offer. That's right, all new customers who sign up using promo code WOLFGANG and make at least a $5 deposit will get to choose between instant deposit match of up to $100 in casino credits or up to $2,000 in casino bonus funds. You heard that right? With DraftKings, the crown is yours with over 300 real money games including slots, blackjack, roulette, and live dealer. There are so many ways to have fun. Personally, when I'm not playing poker, I'm a huge fan of blackjack. I love splitting aces. I love doubling down on 11s. But if DraftKings Casino isn't available in your state just yet, check out DraftKings Daily Fantasy app where you can play for cash prizes all season long. More importantly, DraftKings is safe, secure, and reliable. So after this video, head over to the DraftKings Casino app, sign up using promo code WOLFGANG, and choose your deposit match offer. Bang! Now back to the icebergs, let's go! We see a raise to 20, a call from Phil, a call from another opponent, and I'm on the button with the beautiful Pocket Kings, the Cowboys here in Dallas, and I 3-bet it to $100. The initial raiser wisely folds his cards, but we pick up two customers from Phil, the player in the yellow hoodie. We're going three ways to the flop. Just another tip reiterating my point from earlier. Double flatting isn't the best move. It caps you at those pocket pairs and suited connectors. I don't think ever Phil or the guy in the yellow hoodie has ace-king, ace-queen suited. Pocket aces are never in their range. You always want to be mysterious and keep your range uncapped. So calling 20, then calling 100, I kind of know where I'm at. A 10-4-4 board with two diamonds seems pretty safe. The action checks over to me. Could go for a very small bet or could check behind. I have the king of diamonds in my hand, making it a little bit less likely they have some diamond draws, weighting them to some pocket pairs and top pair. I decide in this spot to go for a one-third pot size bet, which unfortunately gets two folds, but sometimes taking down a small pot is the way you're gonna chip up in this game, and we are taking that one down to the house. 8-6 suited now from the cutoff. There's a raise and a call. I decide to 3-bet here to $60, throwing 8-6 of hearts into my 3-betting range from the cutoff. Like I said in that last hand, you want to remain mysterious, so if the board comes low, we can represent a lot of good hands like straights and two pairs. Calling from the small blind $60 is a little bit worrisome. I definitely think he has a pocket pair here like nines, tens, something that doesn't feel comfortable making it like $200, but something that also doesn't want to let their hand go. Only the player to my right puts in the call, bringing us off to a flop which comes queen, eight, deuce, rainbow, and the action quickly checks over to me. I have a pair which has a little bit of showdown value. Sure, I could represent all of the strong queens. When the action's on me though, I decide to check behind and we see a good card on the turn, the queen of diamonds. When the action checks over to me for a second time, I wanna go for a bet. The reason is I need a bit of protection versus hands like ace-jack, ace-10, Hands that have two overcards to my pair of eights, I don't want to give them another free card to improve on my two pair. Also, if someone has a hand like sevens or sixes, we can get value. And if we bet on this turn and then bet on the river, it's likely we could get a hand like nines, tens, or jacks to fold. So 110 is the price that I lay, and only the small blind now puts in the call. We get the hijack to fold his cards, which brings us off to the river, which comes the ace of hearts. Player in the small blind checks it over to myself, and I don't think he's gonna have a ton of aces. The one that makes sense are the diamond draws, like ace five of diamonds, ace 10 of diamonds, ace jack of diamonds. The ones that called out of the small blind instead of four betting. 
Could my eight be good here? Sure, against a lot of those draws, but at the same time, I'm losing to pocket nines, pocket tens, pocket jacks. He could have a queen. All that being said, a bet here gets him off so many hands, better eights, all of those pocket pairs that are better than myself. But on the contrary, I just wanna to get to showdown here with my pocket eights. I think turning that into a bluff is a little bit ambitious. At these small stakes games, it's hard to get people to fold any sort of pair. There's 465 in the middle, and I decide to check it behind and the villain in the small blind turns over pocket kings. So the no four bet pre with kings is gonna take this one down and maybe a large bet there on the river would have gotten him to fold. Any queen beats him, any ace now gets there on the river, but I guess we'll never know because I decided not to pull the trigger. All right, king, queen of clubs now from the cutoff. I make it $20 to go and we're gonna pick up a bunch of callers. A quick small stakes exploit is you don't wanna be that quiet guy at the table who looks like he hasn't seen the sun in five years. Gotta chat up the table, be social with people and mix it up. It helps get them loose and having fun. And in the long run, they'll often be more courteous in showing their hands when otherwise they wouldn't have. That being said, we're taking our premium off to a flop here multi-way, which comes queen five four with two hearts. <coughs> and TCU decides to donk lead into me for $30. For those of you that haven't heard the term donk betting, it basically is when you're betting into the person who has the pre-flop aggression. So that's me, I made it $20 pre-flop, but TCU decides that this is a good board to bet out into me, and uh, with that being said, it's kind of an interesting play because I still could raise here, so he's just putting himself in a tough spot. I highly prefer checking in his spot, even with his flush draws and sets, and then going for a check raise or check call out of position. I definitely could be raising in this spot, but I decide instead just to flat call the 30, which brings in one other opponent, and the turn comes a brick, it's the seven of clubs. If the opponent in middle position decides to continue betting, I think it's likely he might have a set or a weak queen. But if he checks, uh, he could have a flush draw, a weak queen. I don't think any of his sets would now check on this turn. So when he does in fact check, I fire out for 125. I gotta charge all of the draws, being the heart draws and his worst queens. 125 is the price the player on the button folds. But we pick up one caller from TCU and the river card comes the three of diamonds. When he checks it over to me, once again, it's important not to check behind here and get to a showdown. You wanna go for thin value against all of his pocket pairs like tens and nines, as well as queen jack, queen 10, all can call a bet. If we go small here, it looks super milky. So I decide to go large here and make it look like a miss heart draw. Having no heart in my hand is interesting, but I fire out for 325 and TCU decides to go into the tank thinking about his decision. He says he has a three with a heart draw, ultimately folds though, but uh, you can see my large bet there on the river got him thinking he almost called down with a pair of threes. You have to wait and see the video, man. Uh, can I take you off All right, we pick up king queen of diamonds this time, a different variety. I make it $20 to go, and we're gonna pick up a caller to my left, not before we see a three bet to $100 from the guy in the yellow hoodie. Actions back over to myself. And King Queen suited definitely can call three bets. It's a premium, but you kind of have to be careful post flop as top pair can get you into a lot of reverse implied odd situations, which basically means he can have ace, queen, pocket kings, pocket queens, in which case when we hit top pair, we're gonna be giving him a lot of money because he has the range advantage. King Queen suited works really well with good implied odds to make higher two pairs, strong flushes, and high straights. With that being said, I'm filming a vlog. I have king queen suited. I put in the call and we're heads up in position to a flop, which comes king jack seven rainbow. It's 300 in the middle and he goes for a hundred dollar bet. I put in the call, easy decision here with our top pair and the turn comes a brick. It's the deuce of spades. The opponent doesn't think about it for too long before jamming his $710 stack into the $502 pot putting me in a weird situation. It's weird because I have top pair and the turn really shouldn't change anything. You don't wanna get into a habit of making very big folds, but what is he representing here? You can hear me talk out loud about the hands I think he could be bluffing here with. Aces, block queens, ace five of spades. Would you let the flop run? And a lot of them that I mentioned have a queen in it, which is bad because I have a queen in my hand, making it less likely he'd be doing that. At the end of the day, I couldn't find many bluffs. He could easily have kings, ace, king, pocket, jacks. 
He still could have pocket queens, although it's a little bit less likely. And let's not forget about our good buddy pocket aces as well. I make a pretty disciplined fold here and I turn my cards over, which you definitely shouldn't be doing too often. But when you're a vlogger and you're trying to get the opponent to show theirs, uh, it's definitely a good move. Unfortunately, when I fold my cards face up on their backs, he isn't courteous enough to turn his over, which kind of leads me to believe he had a very strong hand and was shy in turning his over because then it would have looked like I made a good fold. I guess we'll never know though because I mucked my top pair. Like I said, hard to do this in the long run, but I couldn't find too many bluffs that he would take in this spot. Maybe ace five or ace four of spades might be another two combinations, but uh, nevertheless, we protect our stack and head on to the next one, ace jack offsuit from the low jack, and I make it $30 to go. We pick up two callers, not before we see a large raise here from the small blind to $175. When the action folds back around to me, this looks like a high frequency squeeze from the small blind. You see me opening to 30 and we pick up two callers. This is a great spot for the small blind to put in a chunk of money and just take down $90 uncontested. So with that in mind, I decide to play this hand pretty aggressive here. Ace jack offsuit, king jack offsuit, ace queen offsuit are all good hands to go for a four bet in the spot because we have good blockers to pocket aces, pocket jacks. And uh, yeah, we can flop ourselves some pretty nice hands if called. That being said, we go for a four bet. I don't need to go too large because four bets are so, so strong. I decide to make it $400. If he calls, I'll be in position the rest of the way. And if he folds, we pick up about $260, which is never a bad thing. Both of the $30 callers get out of the way, not before the small blind decides to take his sweet time here. Thinking about his decision, is he going to flat? Is he going to fold? No, he decides to ship it all in, in my face for $2,000. And look at that, we just punted off $400, but I definitely like my four bet here. You got to stay balanced in these spots. If I'm doing that with aces, kings, queens, ace, king suited, also have to have a few hands in there that we can show the table. That way they pay us off when we have our monsters. I don't think I've ever seen a five bet that was a bluff. I'm never calling here with ace jack offsuit, just not good enough. I fold my cards. And the benefit of being a vlogger is when we zoom in on the opponent's hands when they don't show, we can pick up that they had pocket aces. So great fold by me there. And unfortunately I ran into the best of it this time. Having the ace in my hand is important because it blocks pocket aces but blockers are just that until the opponent does in fact have two of the remaining three aces. All right, a few more hands to go here. This one's an interesting one with ace jack of diamonds from the small blind. We're gonna pick up a pretty similar spot from the last one where the opponent squeezed from the small blind. We have ace jack of diamonds. We see a raise and two calls. Seems like a pretty prime spot to go for a $150 bet. We're gonna pick up one $25 caller. So that probably means she has pocket pairs or just a suited connector type of hand, maybe some weak aces, king 10 suited, stuff like that. Either way, we're going heads up out of position to a flop, which comes queen nine seven with two diamonds. Pretty great for myself. I have the ace high flush draw. You really wanna be balanced here. I think ace jack of diamonds is a good candidate to go for a C bet. Could get a lot of better hands to fold like pocket fives, pocket tens, all of that good stuff. She decides to put in the call one time here and the turn comes a brick. It's the five of hearts. Like I said, I think fives is folding on this flop. Really shouldn't be putting her on a set. Nines and sevens would have raised me on the flop because there's two diamonds out there. So I think at best she has a hand like king, queen, queen, jack, queen, 10, maybe pocket jacks or tens that decided not to three bet pre-flop. With that being said, I go for a $400 bet, trying to put pressure on all of those queens. You want to be balanced here by betting big with your strong made hands and your strongest draws. In this case, having one overcard, a backdoor straight, and a front door flush draw is a very good candidate to do so. I fire out for $400. The opponent thinks about it for a little while before mucking her hand. I definitely think she had the best hand in this spot, but you can see how putting pressure sometimes just gets the job done and we are taking down that hand with ace high. I haven't done a meetup game in a while, but Sunday, February 11th, I'll be in Houston at Champions Card Club playing some 1-3. It's a meetup game from noon to 4 p.m. And then at 5 p.m., we will be watching the Super Bowl, the Chiefs versus the 49ers. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Come out to Champions Card Club if you're in the surrounding areas. Noon to 4 p.m. at Champions Card Club, a 1-3 meetup game, gonna be a lot of fun. See you there. All right, the very last hand of this vlog, I tell my buddy Harvey to my left that this is the last hand I'm playing. So of course, I straddle from under the gun and the poker gods reward me with pocket jacks. 
Another fun spot here, we see a raise and two calls, gonna go for a squeeze. This time we have a premium and I decide to make it $120 with my pocket jacks. Little pro tip here, if you're getting a lot of callers pre-flop, you can size up. There's a general rule that when determining the three bet raise sizes pre, you should go the size where people will still call with worse hands and doesn't only get you called by better holdings. And yeah, with all that being said, you can see we make it 120, and apparently that was not large enough because three people put in the call, we are going four ways to the flop. Nice raise, <laughs> that accomplished a lot. <laughs> with that being said, we all get three community cards that can help us equally, but the Jack 7 6 board gives me the nuts. Bang! I flop top set. Generally, I would recommend not slow playing strong hands. People aren't going to be building the pot for you usually, especially when you flop top set, and you want to play big pots with your best hand. Uh, it's a huge minus EV spot if you're only playing small to medium sized pots with two pair and better. But in this exact spot, a check on the flop is fine because the board is so dry and I have the nuts having it locked up. If this board was uh, two diamonds or more connectivity to a straight draw, I definitely would not suggest going for a check. But because I have it locked up, I check and the action checks through bringing in the deuce of spades on the turn. That's a brick, but there are two spades out there now. If someone has pocket tens or pocket nines, I think I can get one street of value. I fire out for 275, unfortunately nobody calls and I turn over my cards, the last hand of the night in the books. I look over at my buddy Harvey before taking in the last pot. Let's go. That's gonna conclude today's session here at TCH Social. Like I said in the beginning, wasn't too eventful, but I really wanted to show you guys what your typical poker session looks like. A lot of vloggers will only show you the best of the best, which can be misleading and hard to apply at your home casino. As I head to the cage, we see that we did manage to squeak out a nice profit of around $150 today. Not every session can be a huge winner, but if you minimize your losses and consistently pick up good spots like we did today, you'll see that your win rate will skyrocket. Make sure to click on my other tips and tricks video shown on the screen now. Catch you guys in the next video as always. Peace.